hello again and welcome to another episode of the Hyperion Adventures podcast. I'm Tom. As always, I'm with my gorgeous, wonderful, <laughs> intelligent, <laughs> hardworking, classic Disney attraction, memory loving wife and co-host Michelle. <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering how you're gonna do that entry. Although I have to say, you always say such wonderful things about me, and I, I don't take the time to say them back to you. At least not on the air. Well, yeah, you say them to me all the time off the air, <laughs> and that is just fine. Um, I usually go into those things not knowing exactly what I'm going to say. I just think, <laughs> oh, what is today's topic again? Uh, somehow I need to work this in. And ah, okay. Sometimes so like it's p- a good one. Sometimes <laughs> it's a. Eh, it's always and sometimes good. Sometimes it's a. It's <laughs> always good. No, sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's pretty good. Good. It's pretty good that you joined us today. We are recording this episode on Sunday, May thirtieth. 2021 a very happy memorial day weekend to you all out there we hope you're staying safe we hope you're enjoying your barbecues your get togethers with hopefully family and friends hopefully you're able to do that now after this crazy year we've had but we hope also when you're doing that that you remember what this holiday all is actually all about and that is of course the memories of those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice so we can enjoy doing this podcast having these barbecues enjoying this long weekend. Very well said, honey. (laughs) Thank you very much. But we're going to have a little fun today uh, with this subject, doing memories in a different way. But of course, we always want to make sure we know what this holiday is truly all about. Thank you for joining us today. In the future, you can find most every... (laughs) In the future, you can find us most <laughs> everywhere you get podcasts. However, the very best place to find us is on our own website, HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. And while you're there, you'll get a prompt to offer you an opportunity to get our newsletter. Yes, yeah, so many prompts. They pop up all over the place. <laughs> There's one at the bottom of the page. Lots of chances for you to actually sign up for the newsletter and just be more a part of the Hyperion Adventures podcast world. Right. We hope you do take advantage of that because it's a great weekly uh, newsletter that lets us connect with you all and for those of you who are already signed up we really appreciate that yes uh, we appreciate that you've decided to be a part of this hyperion adventures podcast world we like sending you out things first because you've made that decision and we will continue to do that long long into the future another way to be a part of this hyperion adventures podcast world is to follow us on social media we like to have a lot of fun with you out there on social media please find us on twitter at hyperion podcast facebook instagram and pinterest at hyperion adventures podcast podcast we do have a youtube channel mostly we're just putting out these episodes in a different version of the audio form right now but we do occasionally pop in something else and if you ever want to see what kind of videos we have just do a search for hyperion adventures podcast hit subscribe and then you'll know whenever we have a new video and if you ever want to contact us for any reason please hit us up at our gmail account hyperion adventures podcast at gmail.com that's right and you can connect with us that way to give us some feedback, ask questions, or provide some suggestions. If there's a topic you'd like us to do, a deep dive. A deep dive. Michelle loves to do deep (laughs) dives. She does deep dives all the time, and she is the best at doing the deep dive. So please hit her up if there's something you'd like us to cover. Also, next week is going to be a very special episode. I don't know yet. Uh, But one of the parts of that episode (laughs) is going to be our third anniversary special episode. We we can't believe we're already to our right. third year of doing wow. this. Actually, into our fourth year when we're done with that episode, which is crazy. And we'd like you to be a part of it. So if there's anything you'd like to say about our show, whether it's just a note saying something, whether you want to record something in audio format, video format, whatever, just get it to us by Wednesday at midnight. Uh, Wednesday heading into Thursday at midnight and we will be happy, thrilled, honored to include you within that show. Yeah. Is it important to distinguish midnight Pacific or Eastern time? No, I don't care. I won't see it at that time anyway because I go to bed (laughs) at like an obscenely early time. So I'll see it the next morning anyway. Just I since we have some other things going on this week. Uh, I need to get a jump on it early so I can have the show ready to go. So I just needed a couple of days ahead of before we record it. And thank you to those who have already submitted some things. Yes, we've already received some really sweet messages that um, I don't think Michelle has heard yet. I've had to to listen to a few of them because uh, I wanted to 
to make sure I know where to place them within the episode. So uh, this is going to be a surprise for Michelle. Yeah, I, like, and I like that surprise. There may be a couple that I don't listen to as well, uh, just so I can be surprised when we play nice. them. So, uh, but please send those to us. Also, on um, this week, yes, we are heading out to Avengers Campus Woo-hoo! for opening day. We hope that you will follow along with us on social media. I don't. I try and avoid doing too much on social media when we're out at the parks usually, but I think this day we're going to be all over it since it is opening day. And I know that a lot of you are interested in what the first Marvel themed land on a a U.S. park is going to be like. And we're looking forward to sharing that with you. Uh, Right. And we're very excited and um, looking forward to a fun day and wanting to share that with you all. Yes. So we'll share that with you on that day. And then that will be either part of one episode or two episodes. I don't know. Uh, But (laughs) something next weekend, we will immediately afterwards get that out to you for you. But as for today's show, we have lots of stuff for you this week, including if you reside outside of the Golden State and have been uh, itching for your chance to get back to the happiest place on Earth, we have some great news for you. We'll definitely talk about yeah. that. Uh, if you've been anticipating getting a peek at a classic guest favorite attraction that is going through a little bit of a reimagining, well, your chance is coming soon. We'll also mm. talk about that. And an exciting new musical featuring some some of your favorite characters is coming to Broadway. Yeah. Michelle's super excited about that. So of course <laughs> exactly. we'll discuss that as well, but let's get to this week's episode and let's get to our main topic of this week. So yes, as I already mentioned, this week we're looking at celebrating Memorial Day. And of course, we always want to remember what Memorial Day is all about. But we also want to have a little fun with this. And we've done in the past a look back at memories of Disney attractions. And Disney songs that from the past as well, from theme parks Mm -hmm. of the past, or excuse me, uh, attractions of the past. So we thought we'd kind of approach it in a different way since we've covered that before. Michelle had the brilliant idea, as she (laughs) always does. She always has the best ideas. But let's do this in kind of a different way, kind of comparing attractions that at some point during their lifespan were one thing and now they may have adapted to something completely different or just updated to a different version of that attraction right so we're gonna have a lot of fun with this today with a little bit of disney attraction this or that classic or update yeah so um it was fun preparing for this and it's also very weird not to have a lot of notes to do a show <laughs> Knowing this is that, like the first time in months you know, she has to have a computer in I front know, of her. She I, just has a bunch of little pieces of paper. I'm like very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but we hope this is entertaining for you all. And uh, if, if you're you're like me listening to podcasts, sometimes I'm like, oh, I just want to tell them what I think about this. So mm-hmm. I uh, hope you enjoy uh, kind of listening to our takes. But we'd love to hear about your ideas as well, your feedback on some of our our comments of this or that. Right. And bottom line about this is when we're going to go through these, whether they're the classic version or the updated version, whichever one we discuss, um, we are going to talk about what we prefer. That doesn't mean we didn't like the original version. That doesn't mean we don't like the updated version. And we will never denigrate anybody's uh, appreciation for either side of it because when you go out there, you know, something that people love, maybe it wasn't my favorite version of it, whether it's the classic or the updated version, that's somebody's favorite version of it. And, you know, and we appreciate that and it's all good. You know, it doesn't matter what you like, what you don't like so much. You know, we just want to share what we appreciate and we'd love, like Michelle said, to know what your feelings are on all these attractions we go through. Exactly. So, so Michelle is going to draw names out of a hat here or draw attractions out of a hat. And I guess what we're going to do is kind of discuss this based on what attraction you pull out. Right, I think so. Like I, like I mentioned to you just before we, we started recording is I hope this goes as fun as what it did in my <laughs> head. <laughs> well, Michelle's head is a very fun space, you know. Yeah, you really a, have to know what goes on in there. So, um, yeah, I have these folded up little pieces of paper and on each of them, uh, and I, I didn't do 
every single one, but I did do a, a vast majority, or especially the the bigger named attractions that, like you said, were either reimagined or updated or whatever. And we're ready for the first one. Well, let's hear the first one that she pulls out for our Disney attraction, this or that classic or update. <laughs> okay, so uh, in there's a blend here. Some are Disneyland, some are Disney World. So this particular one is uh, Disneyland. Okay. So this or that, Country Bear Jamboree or the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. All right, so I start with this one? Yes. Okay, um, Country Bear Jamboree all day for me. I, I, I really enjoy Winnie the Pooh. But one of the things I think I enjoy most about going the way to the pool <laughs> is looking for that little sort of Easter egg that's hidden within there from the classic right. Country Bear Jamboree. And I think because I, well, I always enjoyed the Country Bear Jamboree back in Disneyland, I still enjoyed it at Walt Disney World, even though it's a truncated version right. of it. Uh, but I enjoy it that much more because of the fact that it's gone right. from Disneyland. So um, for me, you know, Winnie the Pooh, great. Our son, Scott, loves it. Yes. You know, we will go over it numerous times during a trip there. Uh, but if I had to pick, um, for me personally, it would be the Country Bear Jamboree. What about you? Yeah, I would say the same. Although I I can't say that I went to the Country Bear Jamboree in Disneyland. If I did, I just don't recall it. Um, but knowing, you know, that I love the show over at Disney World. And I, I would say that as well. Um, the Winnie the Pooh at Disneyland is a little bit different than the one at Walt Disney World. I feel like the one at Walt Disney World is a little richer with the the storyline. Um, the one at Disneyland is cute, just a little more disjointed. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, again, like you, that would probably push me over to the Country Bear Jamboree um, over the Disneyland's Winnie the Pooh. Very good. Many adventures of Winnie the so Pooh. So that's our decision on that one. We'd love to know what you think about those attractions yeah. as well, as well as all these. So, all right, what do we have second for right. our Disney attraction, this or that classic or Okay, update? and if you want to pull any of these out. Uh, no, I'm yeah. going to let you. You're the, you're, the, <laughs> you're the game show hostess with the mostest, so we definitely have to go with you. Okay, I think I know. Well, maybe I don't know you the get, answer. You to give this. your opinion first on this one, since I gave. Oh my no, this first one's on got to be yours. Oh, okay, maybe right. the next one, All right. but this one, I, I really kind of, <laughs> I'm actually kind of curious because I, I feel like at times I do know, and then other times I'm like, no, mm. I. Okay. All right, ready for this is at Walt Disney World at Epcot. Okay. Maelstrom or Frozen <laughs> Ever After? Come on, hashtag real <laughs> and love Frozen Ever After. Um, look, I loved Maelstrom. I loved it. Um, first two few chances I got to go to Walt Disney World, mm -hmm. went to Epcot, and I really enjoyed Maelstrom. I think Maelstrom is a, a fantastic attraction. But as I already said, and as we all know, <laughs> hashtag real men love Frozen, and I look forward to going on Frozen Ever After virtually every trip uh, when we get the chance to do it. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, Anna, Christoph, Olaf, Sven, <laughs> Elsa singing Let It Go there right. right as you drop backwards. <laughs> it's it's great. I love it personally. And, uh, you know, it, compared to, look, everybody, you know, Maelstrom was a great attraction. Mm -hmm. And it actually had a lot of the history of Norway and the right. mythology of Norway within it. So I really appreciate that about it. Uh, but it was basically a walk-on when you went there. I mean, it may be a, maybe a little bit longer than like Grand Fiesta Tour, but right. it was 10, 20 minute wait tops every time we seem to go. Whereas now you go to Frozen Ever After, it's one of the longest right. waits within uh, Epcot for sure. So um, I think that other people kind of, feel the same way what do you feel about it though um you know i really was impressed and like frozen ever after uh i tend to go with the traditional mm -hmm. there um but i agree with you it it was something that people got so accustomed to that maybe they didn't appreciate it as much and it's like once it's gone it's like oh i wish it was there sure. you know um so i think my preference over the two would be maelstrom but uh, it's not that i don't like frozen ever after and i love marshmallow in frozen ever after <laughs> <laughs> that's true i do as well i do so yeah i that that would be how i would go on that one so i wasn't quite sure how you would because i know you did like the original yeah, one like, as well so i like both versions mm -hmm. but uh, you know my love for frozen takes over everything else so <laughs> 
time. I, that's why I have to go that way. But uh, I totally appreciate Maelstrom, and uh, it's it's it, that's a that's an interesting one for yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. Through, so. So. All right. So what's next on our All Disney right, attraction? This so. or that classic or update? This time you get to answer first. Okay. Oh. All right. So this one is back at Disneyland. It's uh. This or that, Luigi's Flying Tires or Luigi's Rockin' Roadsters. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Uh, so what's your feeling on that one? <sighs> Actually, that's kind of a hard one um, to pick because they're both great in very different ways. I mean, like the Luigi's Flying Tires, you actually had a little bit of, you know, ability to to do something there that you controlled where you're somewhat, I mean, how coordinated you are, uh, where your tire went. So for those of you who didn't know about this, it it was like an, it looked like a giant inflatable tire laying on its side that you would, um, that was kind of like over air hockey. It was like your own air hockey. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hovering bumper cars right. is what it was. Right, of, yeah. exactly. And so, you, you know, you could lean certain ways to get your tire to move across the the area. And so that was kind of cute. Um, but I have, I guess I, I'll go with the Luigi's Rock and Roadsters. That is just so adorable. So that you're in, you know, like a car and it moves and dances around uh, based on the song and has different uh, patterns based on the song. Yeah, and it's, it was Disneyland's first trackless attraction. Oh, that's good to know. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's really cute and I love the music and theming is fabulous. So uh, I guess I'll go with the, the updated one this there time. You go. Yeah. What about you? Um, I agree with you. Um, I liked both. Uh, but it, you know, there was always issues with the, the, the flying tires that they would break down. People would step on the wrong place, even though they kept telling you not to step. On right, there. Yeah. Um, I know some people have turned their ankles trying to get on True. and off that one. So they had to do something different. And I think what they came up with, with, uh, Luigi's Rollick and Roadsters mm-hmm. are, uh, is a fun concept. And I, I, I like the, the whole backstory behind it, that he's brought all his cousins and family <laughs> right. members from Carsley out there and they're out just having a big celebration right. party and you're, you go out there and they dance. It's a little different every time because they have like four or five different songs. Right. So what you what you will do within the attraction as far as what your car will do and also depends on which car you're in and where it will dance and right. when it will dance and what it will do is always fun. And there's no more fun attraction to be on during <laughs> gay days right. out there for, you know, pride time, right. you know, when, uh, when everybody comes out and gets on that attraction, because let me tell you, it's always fun to be dancing in cars, right? But it's also really, really fun to be dancing in in those cars with the LGBTQ community yes. for sure. <laughs> yes, they bring the fun. Yeah. <laughs> totally. So, yeah. So I agree with you. And you know, the other thing I was just thinking too about the that uh, updated version is it does give an opportunity to change the theming based on holidays. So whether it's Halloween or or um, you know Christmas time. Uh, to have different songs and different types of dancing going on, it I think that gives it, you know, bumps it up a little bit too. Right. Yeah. They do have the layover over out there for right. both Halloween and Christmas as well. So uh, it can be a little bit of attra- different attraction right. when you come out at different times of year. It's just a lot of fun. I like it. It's one of my favorites. It's a, it's, it's a must do at uh, Disney California Adventure Park for right. us when we, when we have the chance. I mean, I don't know about next week because we may be all wrapped up in Avengers <laughs> Campus, but most of the time we will try and hit that up at least once during our trip. Right. And it's one of those that, you know, it, typically isn't an excessively long wait and you know it's fun for the little kids too yeah fun for all ages for for sure so uh that's a great choice all right what's next on our disney attraction this or that classic or update all right so this one is walt disney world okay all right uh magic kingdom Mr. Toad's Wild Ride or The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh? Well, I I can't talk on this because I didn't ever ride Mr. Toad at Walt Disney Mm -hmm. World. Other than I, I could tell you... My, I, I, as riding Mr. Toad at Disneyland, right. that would be the one I would pretty choose. Pretty similar. Yeah, and, yeah. But uh, since I have not ridden both of them at Walt Disney World, I kind of have to abstain slightly. Hmm. But I would, if, I, if again, pressed, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit, the Mr. Toad has a little more excitement to me. But uh, hmm. yeah, I know you love Winnie the Pooh. Right. So I'd like to hear your answer on this. Yeah, you know, um, 
I like you, um, love Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, um, and very happy that it's still out here in California. So um, if anybody wants to ride that again, that opportunity exists. Uh, this one of the Winnie the Pooh uh, adventures, or the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh, I think is just adorable, mm. really is adorable. And maybe just because I love that version and I love going on there with Scott um, and having a good time. He loves it. it. Yes, it's a kiddie ride through and through, but it's just real. If you know the story and everything, I just feel like it's a nice follow along. Um, their queue is adorable. If you, you know, when there was the issue of fast passes and, and walk up, it gave you, you know, uh, an opportunity to, and I know during COVID it, that wasn't available you know but it was very creative and you know just watching the kids play all those activities it was always you know great to see that it was something appreciated so I will go with that one because I know it still exists yeah, so you are a huge fan of Winnie the I Pooh am a you're huge a fan. giant fan of Winnie yep. the Pooh so I think that also helps add into that equation that's for sure. true we actually didn't watch the the movie that has Mr. Toad I mean we've seen Mr. Toad make some cameos right. and other things but as far as the movie where Mr. Toad is really in we only watched that like last Halloween right for the first I know. Time in like, <laughs> I don't know 20 years or something so but whereas Winnie the Pooh we've watched many 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 times yes so. yes so love the music. I mean, Sherman Brothers. I'm a huge fan. Right. Sherman right. Brothers, and we so. have some Winnie the Pooh news coming up in our I Disney know, stories. Of the I week, know. So that's fun, too. All yeah. right. This one is is really for you because I can I really also only know part of it. So Disneyland mm -hmm. submarine voyage or finding Nemo submarine voyage. Mm. They're both similar attractions. I mean, mm -hmm. they're still kind of going. It's the same track. It's the same submarines. They're they're bright. They're painted much more brightly right. now, and a bright <laughs> yellow and everything. Um, I again, I enjoy both of them. But I grew up going, and it was one of my favorite attractions when I was young because mm -hmm. it's just kind of it it takes you into that experience if you've never been on the submarines here. Okay, spoiler alert: they don't ever really <laughs> submerge. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes you feel like right. you are. Yes. It, it gives you that impression of that. And uh, the, the original version is very much based on 20,000 Leagues mm -hmm. Under the Sea, uh, going through this undersea world and uh, seeing mermaids and seeing a, a giant squid. Right. Or a, and there was a there was a, a sea monster at one point right. as well. Um, it was just a really enjoyable attraction. Um, I like it now with Nemo. But I think I would have to go just for nostalgia purposes because it, the kid in me who loved that ride right. growing up, I would go with the uh, classic version of it. Personally. Right. And I can see that. Like I said, like I said, I had I didn't go on the classic version to my memory. At least um, I did go on 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea over at Walt Disney World, which was one of my ultimate favorites. Very sad to see that that had to go. Um so if I, if it was like that, I would have to choose that one as well. But I, I, you know, it's funny in doing, you know, some of the deep dives in the past uh, episodes, looking at some of the history of Disneyland and seeing when you talk about mermaids, they were like some real people mermaids. Oh they yeah. Originally. Like, yeah. Originally the, they had mermaids perched on the rocks. Right. There, like right. real people. Yeah. Like real mermaids. Pictures. Real mermaids. <laughs> That's right. So um, that's kind of interesting. But yeah, um, great answer. Thanks. Thanks. And by the way, if um, if you have never been to Disneyland and haven't experienced the new version of the, the submarines or the old version for that matter, uh, if you've been to Epcot and have done yeah, the seas with Nemo and friends, right. the storyline kind of is very similar true. when you're on that attraction, but it's cooler in Disneyland that's true. because you're actually in a submarine that's going a through very it. Good you know? point. So I think it's, it, it's worth experiencing as long as you don't have... Have, I mean, it can be a little, it's a submarine. It can be a little tight in there. As long as you're not <laughs> worried about claustrophobia, right, uh, right. you could really enjoy this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, all right, here's the next one. And this one is all you because I haven't done this. Mm. Okay. All right. 
it's a uh, Disney California Adventure Park, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, California Screaming or Incredicoaster? Mm. Well, they're still, I mean, it's basically the same attraction. The, the track didn't change mm-hmm. or anything. I mean, I mean, they may have smoothed it out a little bit uh, since California Screaming to what this is the Incredicoaster now. Uh, but I have to lean towards the Incredicoaster just because they actually add some story elements mm-hmm. within it. I mean, it, it's pretty simple, uh, but there are some scenes, some interesting things to kind of that catch your eye throughout it. And right. it again, it's still basically the same attraction. Uh, and it's a really nice, you know, wooden style roller coaster, right. classic um a classic pier type roller coaster as it's in Pixar Pier, you know, right. what was used to be Paradise Pier when it was, uh, when it was the uh, California Screaming Coaster. Um, but because of that story element, because I like the Incredibles and because I think the theming, you know, brings it together, um, I just have to give it just that slight edge. But really, it's it's mostly the same attraction. Right, right. Well, I mean, you could say the same thing about Winnie the Pooh and mm-hmm. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Same track, just different that's a, yeah. <laughs> it's quite a little different. I don't remember that time when, when Winnie the Pooh was sent by Tigger down to H-E double hockey sticks. I don't know about you, but. No, not at all. <laughs> Although that Heffalump and Woozles area is pretty close to that. I right. <laughs> That's funny. So when you go on Incredicoaster now, does it feel faster just because of, you know, because I know like they do the, the countdown shoot off at the beginning mm-hmm. and you have dash through it and things like yeah, that Does I don't I, I think it feels mostly the same yeah you know but it's just that uh, when you're going through it there's just rather than you're just coast on this coaster which right. is fine but I I like Disney tie-ins to it so you're looking for these characters as you're going through certain areas right. for it and um, there's a cool finishing scene at the end of it that you go through at the end cool. as well so um i kind of like all that that they added to it to you know make what was already a great coaster just sure. a slightly better sweet yeah all right here we go so this is um well it, it's, it speaks for itself soaring over california or soaring over the world uh, i wanted your answer first on this one uh, soaring over california hands down mm-hmm. i feel like that it that was well one it was the original but not because it was the original i just i just like that one i felt i was very excited about soaring around the world um but i having experienced both of them I just really, I don't know why I can't explain it, but, but the soaring over California to me just felt more interesting, more likable. Yeah. Um, here's my opinion on it. And uh, I like both mm-hmm. very much. Yeah, I'm me too. To, me to, too. To go on both. Uh, to me, it felt like they tried to make soaring around the world a little more of a thrill ride than right. soaring over yeah, California. You're right. They're trying to have a more gotcha moments of you right. know things coming at you and are we going to clear this right, thing and, right. and this and that. And it, it can be a little bit more unsettling. Whereas soaring over California, it just seems like much more of a. Not that there aren't some of those moments within it. Sure, but it just seems like there's more of this nice, peaceful going over this countryside, right. these orange groves, all these areas through California. And I've mentioned this many times. What I would really love them to do, and again, I'm when I've mentioned this before, I say, yeah, it's me putting more work on the Imagineers <laughs> to do this. But I would love to be able to go in there, and you don't know what you're going to get. Are you going to get soaring around the world? Are you going to get soaring over California? Right. Maybe you do something like soaring over Europe, soaring over Asia, soaring over Africa. Right. You know, and, yeah. and like it's like Star Tours. You go in there and it's a different attraction. Sure. Many times. Again, adding extra work for the Imagineers <laughs> that they want no part of right now. But I think that <laughs> yeah, would be really, did, really cool. You brought up a good point. I mean, they really did it with Star Tours where they, you know, made something very remarkable like that happen. So, yeah. so. but yeah. if I was to be pinned down on it, um, I, 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 I like soaring over California more. But I also think there's a part of that, the fact that it, we don't get it anymore, except for like in small doses. So when it comes back, we get all excited. Right, it's back. right. True. You know, it's the McRib factor. So <laughs> it goes away for a while. And then when it comes back, everyone gets super excited about this thing. Right. You know, whether it's deserved or not. You know? <laughs> true. Good point. Very good point. All right. So what's next on our Let's Disney attractions, see. this or that, classic or what's update? What's next? All right. Uh, I'm not, I think... I think you can answer this one, but I'm not positive. I couldn't remember. Food rocks over Sorin. Sorin. Oh, well, I, I never saw Food Rocks. So see, I, I thought maybe you I had. never, I didn't get a chance to see uh, 
food rocks that uh, had gone away by the time I first visited Epcot. So um, I, I love Soren, uh, but I, I want to hear what you because you've done both. So right. uh, your I, opinion is what really matters. Yeah. Um, and again, it's one of those hard ones, kind of like with the uh, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. When you know you can get it somewhere else, it's it's you want something that makes it different. So food rocks was different and mm. Soren I can get in California. Me, it's all about me. Um, just kidding. Um, but <laughs> and I, and food rocks was cute and quirky and I loved it. Um, but when I was thinking about this episode and talking about it, what I realized it, it was a, it was a period piece, right? So like, yes, if it were still going on now, people would you know, recognize some of the songs and stuff like that because there were some classics. But I think what what was good about it was it also had more current things. And if it were to continue, it would have to be updated or else, you know, younger people wouldn't be as Mm -hmm. connected to it or have that, you know, that kind of an impact with it. So um, as much as I love Food Rocks and if I had only one opportunity to go on a ride today of the two of them, I would pick Food Rocks. Sure. But I think it's from a business perspective and everything and overall, it makes sense to have something more updated like a Soren that is a little bit more timeless because it doesn't have that music connection with period pieces. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so. I think, uh, you know, it's, again, we're, we just mentioned how it's kind of a thrill ride, even the, even the Soren over California where it's more, right, we said it's a little more calm, right. still a bit more of a thrill ride. It's right. a little more exciting than uh, a show featuring animatronics or whatever, right. you know, exactly. which again, cool. Um, but I could see why this would be a bigger draw for most right, people. Right, right. And for a- anybody who didn't know about Food Rocks, it it was one of these, um, like you said, audio animatronic pieces, a, a show where it talked about food and, you know, trying to emphasize um, good eating habits, which was a nice message, you know, an ed- ed- edutainment thing that they had at Epcot. And um, it took, you know, names of bands and just kind of, tweak them to fit like the peach boys mm-hmm. and things like that. And so, you know, it was quirky. It was cute. Yeah. It sounded like it. I would have liked to have seen it yeah. at some point outside of like on YouTube or something. Right. You know, so very cool. What's next? All right. Let's see here. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this one came right afterwards. So in this one, I guess you won't be able to answer then kitchen cabaret versus food rocks. Yeah. Well, there I go. I, I didn't <laughs> see either one of them. So uh, see, again, I, I really kind of thought you had seen food rocks. So yeah, that's so I'll have to take again your input on this one. Right. Um, kitchen cabaret. Kitchen cabaret was adorable. And again, um, I love the music from food rocks. And, and, and that's what my answer is today at this moment but on another day um, or if I was looking at some old YouTubes and seeing the two of them I might feel differently but uh, Kitchen Cabaret was the original one and it's the one that had Veggie Veggie Fruit Fruit song Uh (laughs) so um, again you know from childhood and, and with family and everything it was one of those songs that could get in your head and just you know really enjoy but um, it was also one about food and about proper eating, talking about food groups and, you know, again, a play on things like Bonnie Appetit and things like that. Uh, it, it was adorable. Cool. So what was the real difference between the two? Was it just the music stylings between the two or what would you say? So for those of who didn't get to, like me, who didn't right. get to, to uh, see them? Yeah. Good question. So the, the Kitchen Cabaret was really, you know, talking about the four food groups at the time, you know, it was the, the big push and it, and it was um it was cute it was almost like vaudeville mm. okay. show type cabaret. thing yeah yeah cabaret, cabaret yeah. right um and then food rocks it was really getting into um you know it it, it had more um spice to it more i guess of an more of an that edge rock right it's rock edge. and roll and you know those rockers you're learning about the food groups <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the characters were a little bit more um edgy and not I don't want to make it sound like it was over the top edgy it wasn't but it was you know in that regards um it I think it was more entertaining than educating educational as the kitchen cabaret was kitchen cabaret is just kind of cute it's just like little kid cute you know Mm -hmm. think of figment kind of thing you know it's just adorable nice 
Yeah. Mint is adorable. I agree. Yes. Yeah. I wonder if you're going to draw something with figment out of the hat here. By the way, we're drawing these out of a hat. We don't know what's coming next. <laughs> Other than Michelle knows what she put in the hat. Right, so. right, right. And we're kind of getting down there. Not right. too many left. Okay, so. so what's next on our Disney attractions, this or that classic or update? Right. Um, so from Epcot, O Canada, Circle Vision, which was, you know, like the original, which had a few variations on it, or Canada Far and Wide Circle Vision. Mm. Um, I love the original version. I love the mm-hmm. song. I mean, they, they still have the song. The song is virtually the same, but I like the original version right. of uh, the song to begin with. Uh, so for me, and I don't know if I saw the original version of um, O Canada or if I saw a more updated one later yeah, on. I think probably a little um, more updated. I'm, and I do like Canada far and wide, but I think the the Martin Short version right that is, was more updated uh-huh. is is uh, is the version that I enjoyed more right right um, yeah and I guess I could have put all three ver you know I mean the other version before Martin Short too um, which was you know the original one uh, but I agree with you to a point that I like the original one I like the original music even the one before. I love the one before Martin Short. I Martin Short did do a great job, and I love that one too. But the original one, maybe again more nostalgic mm. as to why I like it better. Um, the new newer version now, the uh, Canada Far and Wide. I love learning more about the geography of the country. I love the educational aspect of it. I learned a lot of things I didn't know. Um, I just didn't think the presentation came through as as well as the other versions. Mm, mm-hmm. Let's put it that way. Um, I do like at the end that they still, you know, brought out some of the little parts to the original one. Um, so I will concur with you. Overall, the original versions were my favorite. Right. Gotcha. So that's my opinion too. But I, I saw it less than you did. So, um, you know, you have a more of a... A historical background right. in watching that show than I have. So. But maybe that's why it's interesting to hear your perspective because you're more objective in looking at the one with Martin Short and the one now. Yeah. Again, both great. Mm-hmm. Um, love them both. But uh, if I had to watch one again, if I can only pick one to watch, it would be the, uh, the I guess it's not the original version, the version right. with Martin Short. Right. Okay. This I should probably save this one for last. We have, okay. All right. I'll save that one for last. <laughs> So, so we, got, we got two left. Is that it? We have two left. Okay. All right. So this one I can only partially answer. So it's mainly you, honey. Okay. Hollywood Tower of Terror or Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout? Ooh, um, well, because this is just in Disneyland, um, I think that I will have to lean towards uh, Mission Breakout. Mm-hmm. Now, I, and there's a reason for this. Now, a Tower of Terror within uh, Disney's Hollywood Studios at Walt Disney World uh, it's it's better. It, they had more. They could do more with it. It has a better mm-hmm. pre-show. Right. It is a, the, the story is more complete right. within it. It themes a bit better. Uh, I hope they don't change that one because I, I like that one as it is. The Disneyland version just kind of always felt like it was a knockoff of the right. Disney Hollywood Studios version of the. A tower I, of I terror. Agree with you. Right, right. Uh, so, and you know, th- th- there was one problem when they switched it to Mission Breakout. It was that it kind of stuck out like a sore thumb. Right. Now, with the opening of Avengers Campus next week, it looks like it's going to blend in much more easily, and that's going to be nice. But the attraction itself is great. Uh, it's got the music that you expect from Guardians of the right. Galaxy. Uh, it can be a little bit different each time you go on it because of the fact that there's different falls raises whatever right. based on uh what music they have right. playing I think there's like six different soundtracks right something like that um the pre-show blends with it a little better it's it i i find it to be the disney better than the disneyland version of tower of terror i won't say it's better than the disney hollywood studio version right. of tower of terror but definitely the disneyland version this is preferable to me right right i can see that i can see what you're saying exactly and you know having done just the tower of terror and not done the guardians of the galaxy um i agree with you in comparison of the two parks that the one you know the one at disney world i mean and you get that ability to build up that that terror you know Mm -hmm. it's it's not 
as I, I don't know how to describe it more than that. You're going through more things and you're, it, it just is building and it's building and it's building. And so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. The, the, the storyline that goes with guardians of the galaxy mission breakout is uh, considering that they couldn't do all the things they did at the Disney Hollywood studios version. Uh, it fits better. Um, also, because you don't have as much buildup, you're not being able to take the car and go all these different places right. or whatever um, with it building into it. Um, it launches you. It's, so it's an immediate thing. Right. You know, so it's it, it, like, here you go and you're you're going. Right. You know, and so <laughs> and the music kicks in and you're off. You know, you have, um, rocket plugs in the, the things and you go. Right. Uh, so it's it, it has that excitement to it that I think that was lacking from the Disneyland version of the Tower of Terror. So that's why yeah. I would pick that one. But Good answer. I totally get the nostalgia for Tower right. of Terror on the West Coast as well. Sure, so. sure. All right, last one. And the one. last one for our Disney attraction, this or that, classic uh, or update. I think this is the one that's going to have most people up in arms. Right, I, have a feeling I, know. I know what it is. <laughs> and, and actually, I did my best not to even think about it uh, since I have made the list. I, I tried to make this list very early on in the week, so I would have a little bit of a fresher perspective. Um, and so I tried not to think about this one to see if I could be a little bit more um, objective and in the moment. So uh, the great movie ride <laughs> or Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Uh, Frank and Jim from Dillis Diz don't listen to this. <laughs> you may not want to hear our ahead. response on this one, <laughs> at least my, my response. But uh, I would love to hear what Michelle thinks of this first, because she had more chances to uh, do the great movie ride than right. I did. I did it a couple times, but I... I can't say that I did it a lot. So uh, right. what do you think, Michelle? Yeah, I mean, it, really having to think about it and analyze it, uh, my response would be actually the great movie ride. Um, even though I adore, I adore the new version of that attraction. Um, and I love uh, Mickey and Minnie. I love the brightness of it and the fun of it and everything. I guess the again nostalgia, but also it, it, and I see the need that they had to change it because it was also becoming a very much walk on kind of ride, and it was a great ride just if you're either tired or hot and wanted to get into the air conditioning, you know. So that was kind of nice, but I don't know. I guess maybe because I really liked the movies and I I thought it really embraced the the Hollywood part of the park, you know, which I I felt like you know, a lot of things had been leaving away from that, that you would think of like when you're thinking of Hollywood, you know, so, you know, getting rid of the, um, what do you call that ride with the backstage? Oh, the tour, the backstage, yeah, the backstage. back lot tour, backstage tour. Right. You know, you know so um, I felt like this was kind of the heart, the core of that Hollywood mm -hmm. perspective of the park that you went in to see. And, and I thought it captured that nicely. Yeah, so I get it. Uh, I, I think you know the problem with the great uh, movie ride when I rode on, when I had the chance to mm -hmm. ride it, uh, was it was near the end, and so I think that maybe it, it wasn't receiving the care it received in the past. Sure. So I, you know, I was like, oh, it's fine. I like it enough, right. but I just didn't see everything about it that I thought was spectacular that right. so many people loved about it but I get the nostalgia and I get why it fits there I yeah. totally everything about it and I wish that they could have put both things in place but right. I have to go with Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway because of the fact that I think it's a top five attraction within all of Walt Disney World like yeah. if you're going to name I, yeah. your top five rides that currently exist there I think it would be somewhere within my top five interesting uh, so I think that because of that I, I, w I couldn't have put great movie ride for that and you know I, I right. liked it I I couldn't have put it as like one of the top five attraction within Walt Disney World. Um, and so for that factor alone, um, I have to put Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway ahead of the great movie ride. Um, I, it's adorable. I love the the, the trackless mm -hmm. system that it goes. So you don't exactly know where it's going. I right. love the little Easter eggs everywhere that you're going to watch. You're going to go on this attraction numerous times and still be picking things out sure. because it's it's so fantastical and there are just so many little things that you can't see all at once um i i'm looking forward to when we actually finally get to go when we get to see the pre-show too because i've heard that that also sets the stage right. that much better sure. for it once we can get the chance to do that as well so um for me i it that's just simply it's just it to me 
I would go on Mickey and Minnie's Runaway. It's it's a must do for me. Like it's it's something that I want to do every trip we go right. to Walt Disney World. You know? Yeah, and I, I agree with you on that. Um, I just don't know if that would be forever my feeling right you know it's because it is new because it is glitzy and you know bright and you know a lot of energy it's high energy yeah. you know oh and i love goofy too uh, obviously um but yeah it's just a little bit more I, again i guess nostalgia and yeah. and like you're saying without the pre-show it, it seems like um it felt shorter mm. so maybe with that it's gonna go back to feeling you know longer like the other one yeah. the other the great movie ride Interesting. So, yeah. yeah, but I don't think any choice is wrong there. Right, I mean, right. I don't think yeah. any choice is wrong on any of right. these. It's and, all what you like. And yeah, what yeah. you like is fine. What and I it, like is fine. What you like is fine. Right. What everybody likes is fine. Exactly. And it's this or that as we talk right now, as I mentioned. And it's not like the other ones were not good or not enjoyable. Mm-hmm. It's just like if you could pick one for yeah. today. Yeah. Again, we would not denigrate any of these, your choices on any of these attractions, what any versions of them. We all, they think they're all great. They're just, are some that we prefer over others. Right. And I wouldn't say for any of them that I would say, hey, it really should go back to the original one. It's just, again, looking at it in the perspective of if I could only go on one of those versions today, what version Mm -hmm. would I pick? Perfect. And we'd love to know what versions you would pick of all these attractions we've gone through. Hit us up on social media, email us, whatever, and we'll share them on an upcoming show. Maybe not our next ones because we're going to be so (laughs) jam-packed on our next shows. But somewhere in the future, we will go back and revisit that. Maybe we'll revisit these again at some point because there's more attractions. There's always updates. I'm going to be talking about an update to an attraction here in the Disney Stories Mm -hmm. of the Week in a moment. So anyways. Good job, sweetheart. Well, thank you. Great choices. Great breakdown. And that is our Disney attractions, this or that, classic or update. Good to have those. Whether you, whether you enjoy the attractions as they are now, whether you enjoyed them as they used to be, it's always good to have those memories of the attractions. That's part of what drives us to keep going back to these Disney parks right. uh, constantly is the memories of how uh, much we enjoy this stuff. Yes, exactly. And, you know, that, that's why I thought for Memorial Day. Let's, you know, I know, we like you said, we've done the ones of uh, attractions past that are no longer there. But I just thought, yeah, let's let's kind of do this revisit the memories of the past and compared to the to the what's new yeah let's have a little fun with it it. good job sweetheart great job you're so sweet job michelle always does the best (laughs) topics uh let's get to the disney stories of the week we do have a few for you this week and i'm gonna start uh right here in our own state and is if you do reside outside of our state the golden state Mm -hmm. california and have been itching for your chance to get back to the happiest place on earth well we have some very Mm -hmm. good news for you this from the disney parks blog they say we are pleased to announce that beginning on june 15th 2020 (laughs) 21 everything's happening on june 15th in california disneyland will once again be able to welcome travelers from outside the state of california back to the theme parks out-of-state visitors may now begin booking their return to the parks on disneyland.com yeah that's really exciting news i'm sure for a lot of people who you know are west coasters that uh want to come down to see the park or come over to see the park and uh this morning and looking at what is available first of all they've opened up through um the end of September, not quite the last day of September, but like around the 27th or the 28th of September. Um, I think that what it is, they're doing 90 days out now. And they're it's actually up to 120 now. 120. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was counting. Sorry. That's part of the story. I, my math was wrong. I, that's okay. That's part of the story here. That's why, that's the only reason I knew that. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, great to see that whether a single park or a uh, park hopper passes, there was quite a bit of availability uh, moving forward. Yes. Uh, so it's exciting news. I know there's been a lot of people champing at the bit to uh, get out there mm-hmm. and, and visit Disneyland because they haven't been able to do it for so long. Maybe you've been living in Oregon, uh, Washington, Arizona, anywhere across the country. Maybe, you know, wanting to get to Disneyland and you live on the other side of the country right. and you were thinking you, this was going to be the year to do it. Well, now your opportunity is arriving. So, uh, by the way, the state of California still strongly recommends that all guests be fully vaccinated or obtain a negative COVID-19 
2019 test prior to entering the theme parks. In addition, all guests will be required to wear an approved face covering throughout their visit at Disneyland Resort. That is as of today. today right. I don't know what happens on June 15th because according to many people, COVID's done on June 15th. <laughs> um, no, not really. Right, but, right, it's just right. funny that suddenly in June 15th, everything is opening up in right, California. Exactly. So, um, Anyway, um, just keep tabs on what the you know rules are as we move forward in California, and they'll let you know whether you have to wear a mask, whether you can wear a mask at uh, certain locations, right. whether you don't have to wear a mask at all. But um, as a reminder, also to enter the theme park, all guests ages three and older need to have both a ticket and theme park reservation for the same park on the same date. As Michelle mentioned already, uh, you, they've opened it up now where you can make park reservations up to 120 days out. So right. if you're looking forward to uh, July, August uh, into September, mm -hmm. uh, you can start looking and booking those dates now. I know we have some uh, wonderful friends Friends of ours that are listeners to the show, yeah. uh, Camille and Jonathan Cotton, who have made their plans to come down here Yay. in July. We're I trying to uh, kind of mesh our schedules. Yeah. So I mean, we may it's... not pay for tickets to get in the park because <laughs> <sighs> we're missing those annual passes right now. Right. It starts to add up as you go to the park so right. many times, but hopefully meeting them at downtown Disney for lunch or, or something. Just yeah, to, we're going to make that happen. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we are looking forward to that possibility as well. Yeah, definitely. And and, and, you know, it is such good news to hear that it's finally opening up more. And I'm sure it's going to become very popular soon uh, with the opening of Avengers Campus. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I'm seeing like in June, um, mainly the beginning and middle of June, where that's kind of a popular location. You've seen California Adventures reservations right. go a little quicker. Yeah. Park pass yeah. reservations. Yeah. But but still most days, you know, and what's great about the park hopper is, you know, whichever park you can get a reservation for, you can go over there, you know, starting at noon, which is really nice. And it's super easy to park hop right. here. So speaking of Avengers Campus, while we're talking about this, I might as well bring this up. Now, it was announced this week that the uh, the new attraction, Web Slingers, mm -hmm. a Spider-Man adventure right. over at Avengers Campus, is also going to be on the virtual queue system, right. kind of like Rise of the Resistance. Now, if you have a park hopper, uh, depending on which park you go into the morning at 7 a.m., you can try and get a boarding group for, right. if you're going to Disneyland Park first, you can try and get a boarding group for Rise of the Resistance. If you're going to Disney California Adventure Park first, you can try and get a boarding group right. for Web Slingers. Now, uh, if you have a park hopper, you do have the chance at noon, possibly, to try and get the boarding group for the other thing, whether right. it be Web Slingers, if you're coming from Disneyland over to Disney California right. Adventure Park, or vice versa uh, for Rise of the Resistance. However, if you are, don't, if you land a boarding group for one or the other in the morning, and it doesn't get called before noon, you unfortunately will miss out on that opportunity to get the boarding group for the other one. That right. is what well, you'll probably miss out. They go within seconds, if you know, minutes, right. but more likely seconds. <laughs> right. um, so you're probably going to miss out because you cannot hold two boarding groups at the same time. So what you're hoping for, if you were trying to do both in one day, is that you get an early enough boarding group that you get done before right. noon and then you can try for the other right, thing. Exactly. But just know, just know that going in. So when you're deciding to, um, if you want park hoppers and are hoping to get both, uh, don't bet on it. It's possible, right. but I wouldn't gamble on that fact you may want to try if you have the ability to do one day at one park one day at the other park. right right because then you'll have two opportunities that day to get that so right that's a good idea yeah so it's depending on which of the attractions you really want to see or like you said do one each day and don't do a park hopper and yeah. have have two opportunities that day to secure a boarding pass. Right. And if you are in the park, either park, and you are trying to get Rise of the Resistance or you're trying to get Web Slingers, you don't, you're don't. you not successful at 7 a.m. You will still have that opportunity at noon uh, to try and get it again. Right. So uh, just be aware of that. So it's just all what you feel is like. You may get lucky. You may, you know, be at Disney California Adventure Park, get in the first several boarding groups of Web Slingers and be done before noon. And then you could try and get that Rise of right. Or, or vice versa. Um, but if that's what you're 
depending your whole trip on is getting both of them, eh, you may want to try a different, you know, give yourself more possibilities if you've been really dying to get on those attractions. Right. And if you're from the East Coast coming over here, make note of that difference in time. It's noon, not 1 p.m. like right. it is at Walt at Disney least, World. Uh, again, as of today, right. it wouldn't shock me when they, you know, them not being able to hold these boarding groups together if they either extend the hours mm-hmm. of the park. So, you, you know, the park opens a little earlier, giving you a little bit larger window to get those boarding groups in before right. the next opportunity or they move it back to that one o'clock time. That's true. I'm just speculating. I don't know anything about it, but it wouldn't shock me if that's the case. Yeah. Like you said, the main thing is whenever you're going to travel, just check on what, what that is, but make note that it could be a different time than the other parks. For sure. And I guess uh, Indiana Jones is also now on the virtual uh, queue as well. So if you can get through both of those, you may be able to get the Indiana Jones virtual queue as well. Right, Who knows? right. Uh, yeah. I don't know that that one's a restriction that you can't have. I don't think you can have two boarding groups for anything at any one time. Mm. At least as, I, as it stands right now. Now that may change in the future as more things start to get on virtual queues because it seems like that's kind of the direction they're going right um so as some of these super popular attractions get on virtual queues eventually there may be like okay you can't get into another virtual queue for like two hours or something after right. you get one kind of like the fast pass system um but eventually you may be able to join a different one i don't know um but again i'm totally speculating right. but you know we'll see Anyway, so for those of you who are trying to get out there and trying to get on both of those, best of luck, however you decide to approach it. Yeah, yeah. So. So. Uh, moving on, if you've been anticipating getting a peek at a classic guest favorite attraction that is going through a little reimagining or maybe a little more than a little reimagining, <laughs> uh, your chance is coming soon. Again, this is from the Disney Parks blog. If you've missed the backside of water, hippos <laughs> that wiggle their ears and skippers with a pun for every river bend, we have exciting yes. news. Jungle Cruise will reopen on July 16th, 2021 at Disneyland Park with an updated experience that welcomes new characters from around the world, plus even more of the humor, wildlife, and skipper heart that makes this classic attraction a favorite at Magic Kingdom Park. Meanwhile, uh, you can continue to enjoy the Jungle Cruise while updates are being made and all changes will be completed at some point this summer. So right now, yes, the Jungle Cruise at Magic Kingdom over at Walt Disney mm-hmm. World is still going on, but they're making little changes sure. here and there. Right. Uh, meanwhile, at Disneyland, the Jungle Cruise has been closed since the park has reopened, right. but it's getting set and they're getting ready to reopen it. So it looks like Disneyland will be the first to experience the all of right. the changes, the new storyline that goes along. Yeah, with it. that's exciting. And uh, so happy to hear that it's going to be opening soon. Right. So now yeah, July yeah. 16th. Uh, so we'll, uh, I don't know when we'll get a chance to see it because again, breaking the bank with these Disneyland <laughs> tickets. Um, but I am excited to find out all about it and hear the storyline and hear the new jokes from yep. the, uh, the skippers who right, are right. really what the jungle cruise is all about anyway. So that's fun. We could postpone our next trip till then. No, Avengers <laughs> Campus over Jungle Cruise. I'm sorry, I love Jungle Cruise, but uh, Avengers <laughs> Campus, hello, hello. So, very Just kidding. Sad. I know, I knew you were kidding. Uh, moving on, and this is one that strikes deeply into the heart of Michelle, and she's very excited mm-hmm. about this, even though I don't know when we're going to possibly get a chance to do this, but still... It did plant a seed in our heads. An exciting new musical featuring some of our favorite characters is coming to Broadway. This from D23.com. This fall, Disney fans are invited to venture deep in the Hundred Acre Wood (laughs) via Winnie the Pooh, the new musical adaptation, a brand new adventure coming to Times Square's Theater Row beginning October 21st, 2021. Winnie the Pooh, Christopher Robin, Piglet, Eeyore, Kanga, Roo, Rabbit, Owl, and of course, (laughs) Tigger too, will come to life on stage through stunning life-size puppetry. Uh, The beautifully crafted musical stage adaptation will feature the Sherman Brothers classic Grammy Award winning music with additional songs by A.A. Milne. Wow. So that is really, really cool. I know that Winnie the Pooh is in everybody's uh, cup of tea, but it's adorable. (laughs) And, you know, the fact that it is using puppetry, um, Disney and puppetry is always very impressive, really impressive. I mean, whether you're talking about like what was used in, um, the Lion King mm-hmm. on Broadway, really impressive. Uh, at 
Disney's Animal Kingdom where they had Nemo the Musical. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So good. Right. Uh, Uh, Frozen. Frozen, yeah. Yeah. Um, Things that we've seen on the cruise ship with, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe not the entire cast being puppets, but definitely some portions of it uh, really is so mesmerizing to watch yeah it's so impressive the skill sets that they have and then the uniqueness of the designs of those puppets is just truly amazing and that's what really drew my attention to this it's not just um you know the story of winnie the pooh and you know i remember when we went to go see um the little mermaid Mm -hmm. and thinking huh that's just going to be really as a play but just to see how the characters moved and how their their motions were always ones of being under water under the sea under the sea yeah. <laughs> um then it i just know that this is going to be equally impressive and enjoyable yes uh really cool stuff mm-hmm. uh very excited for it and uh, I, I think it's going to be interesting i i we love winnie the pooh um, Winnie the Pooh was the original Toy Story, by the way. True. Uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> these are true. toys that come to life, right. you know, but there's just so much heart involved in right. Winnie the Pooh. Exactly. And there, you know, so many different, you know, it's all of Christopher Robin's personalities put into different parts of his personality, right. put into all these characters. And I, I think it's just, it's just such a lovely story and endearing, um, I, I I can't wait to see it on stage, and I hope that yeah, you know, I hope we get to. I'd love to get to Broadway right. and see it. But even if they we can't, I hope they also have a touring company that right. can come around exactly. at some point because uh, this sounds wonderful. I'm uh, moving on with the story. Uh, it says Winnie the Pooh: The New Musical Adaptation is developed and presented by Jonathan Rockefeller, whose spectacular puppetly, puppetry uh, delighted audiences who experienced the acclaimed productions of the Very Hungry Caterpillar Show <laughs> and Paddington. Get in a jam. <laughs> uh, Rockefeller says, quote, I am thrilled to be entrusted to create a new classic for the stage for new audiences as they join the adventure into the Hundred Acre Wood. And what a grand adventure, end quote. So wow. that sounds like a lot of fun. Yes. And I'm very excited about it. Me too. Yeah. So a, a ticket pre-sale for Winnie the Pooh, the new musical begins on June 1st, 2021. Mm. So that's Tuesday. Hopefully you've listened to this before then. If you're thinking about this, starts on Tuesday. Uh, uh, that's goes on. That's before tickets are available to the general public beginning on June 14th of 2021, 2021 uh, to register for the pre-sale and to learn more about the new show. You can go to Winnie the Pooh show dot com. Again, that's Winnie the Pooh show dot com. Cool stuff. Very cool. Very exciting. Yeah, exactly. So uh, very much looking forward to it. Now, before we wrap up the Disney stories of the week, I just have one more quick story uh, that you may be interested in from here in California. We've already talked about Avengers Campus opening. Mm -hmm. If you haven't, can't tell already, we're a little excited (laughs) about it. Um, But there's something interesting for everybody coming up here uh, this week. And this is from the Disney Parks blog. In just a few days, the first recruits will step into Avengers Campus at Disney California Adventure Park. And as we gear up, we're thrilled to share that we will be streaming live the opening ceremony of Avengers Campus on June 2nd. Yes, so that's Wednesday night. They will be streaming the opening ceremonies. I don't know if you remember back from Star Wars Galaxy's Edge Mm -hmm. reopening out here on the West Coast. They did something very similar. I think they did it on the East Coast as well. Uh, But we were paying much closer attention (laughs) on the West Coast because we were gearing up to go at that point to uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge as well. So uh, they go on to say, join in with the Disney Parks blog on June 2nd at 8.15 p.m. Pacific Time, 11.15 p.m. Eastern Time to watch the historic dedication from the Disneyland Resort in California. You'll also catch a glimpse inside the Epic Land as a few special guests assemble to celebrate this moment. Uh, the ceremony will also be featured live on uh, at on Disneyland, Disneyland's Facebook page and Twitter channels, as well as Disney Parks blogs, Facebook and Twitter channels as well. So uh, something cool to check out. And by the way, they usually, if you're on the East Coast and you don't feel like staying up to 1115 right. to watch this, they usually have those. They'll be on YouTube the next day, so you can check it out the, the next day if you desire. Yeah, looking forward to that. That's exciting, and uh, we'll get a glimpse of it. I mean, we've—I don't know if you've checked out, but there's—they um, released the the map mm-hmm. uh, online, so you can kind of get a, a view of that. Which, like you mentioned earlier, the Guardians of the Galaxy—you know—that is kind of like flows into that. Yeah. Um, 
that area as well now nicely. So, and one of my staff is actually going to be out there and she couldn't get tickets for the fourth, uh, but she's going to be there on the third. So my fingers are crossed that they might Mm. be doing some soft openings and she and her husband might be able to experience that. I know they've been doing some cast member previews this week. So hopefully something works out with that. So that'd be nice. We're excited to be out there on the fourth. So that's going to be cool. And uh, if you remember the uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, uh, you know, grand opening mm-hmm. celebration that they had. Mark Hamill, right. Harrison Ford showed up. I, I George think George Lucas. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Billy D. Williams, I believe, right. jo- showed up as well. So it'll be interesting to see what sort of special guests they get because there's so many big names from Marvel, and, and right. you know, we're so close to Hollywood. Easy to bring them over um, for something like this. So it'll be interesting right. to see who comes out for this celebration. Right, and it's exciting that the Wednesday following the grand opening uh, will be the first Loki series on mm-hmm. Disney Plus. That's right. Yeah, which we're very excited about. Yeah. So, Loki very so. Much. so so that's it for the Disney stories of the week. However, we never leave you without giving you some sort of tip that might help you on your next vacation. And we do this. We always start with Michelle. One, because she's wonderful, <laughs> gorgeous, intelligent, <laughs> Hard working. She has the very best <laughs> lists. She has the very best topics, but she definitely has the very best tip. So let's get to it. Here's Michelle's tip of the week. Oh, you're so funny. So my tip is actually incorporating a news story, which I wasn't sure if you were going to be announcing it. I was a little sitting on edge like, oh, I hope hope I can get to announce this because it's part of my tip. Um, so uh, the news story part is that Disney is teaming up with Snapchat to have certain filters available uh, in Walt Disney World, part of the, you know, the 50th anniversary uh, celebration that's coming up. But the tip is between now and June 3rd, you have an opportunity to try uh, part of the filters out at home or anywhere you want. The easiest way you can do this is to go on the Disneyland uh, app. And it's if you scroll down, you'll see that where it says your your opportunity to to do this. You will have to if you don't already have one, create a Snapchat account. But anyways, it's really got some really cute. You can either do uh, a selfie with Minnie Mouse, a selfie with Mickey, or a, a selfie with wearing the traditional Mickey ears. And it's really really cute. And yeah, uh, you can it makes like little movies where the characters actually move yeah, yeah I, I, have I've you seen it i've seen it and they're they're very animated it's really cool yeah so see like I'm oh, do- there's there's I'm mickey do- right now with michelle very cute yeah so anyways uh for right now when you do it you you have access for 48 hours nice and again that's very short time frame you only have till june 3rd to try this out but it's it's really cute and you'll get a sneak preview preview of what's coming ahead with this um iconic Mm -hmm. connection with disney and snapchat right so this is right now you can do this anywhere but eventually it's going to be more in use when you're at the park when you're at walt disney world exactly yeah yeah so so. really cool yeah do you get it iconic iconic i got it ionic (laughs) All right, I guess we need to wrap, wrap this thing up. up. We're wrap really getting uh, yeah, corny. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's first get to my tip, which will not be anywhere as good as Michelle's, because Michelle always has the best nah. tips. Um, my tip is like, look, it's it's starting, well, not in every part of the country, but most <laughs> of the country, it's starting to get hot again. Uh, so I'm going to revisit some of our tips for hot days, because I think it's important to bring these out. It's been a while right? Uh, since, you know, one, it's been hot, but also since we've all been out to the parks, for many of us, we haven't. So I just want to revisit some things as you're getting to go back to whether it be Disneyland or the Walt Disney World Resort. Maybe it's the first time back since they've reopened, you're vaccinated, Mm -hmm. you're finally feeling comfortable with going back. Uh, Just some things to kind of prep you for the heat and to be ready to go when you're out there. I'm going to start with before you go on your trip, especially if you have not been going a lot of places, have not been getting out a lot because you've been quarantining right. or whatever for the last year plus, um, get out and get some exercise and walk a little bit before you go out. So you're, yes. you know, your legs are more prepped and ready for all this mileage you will put in right. at the parks because that hasn't changed. You will still walk <laughs> plenty at the parks uh, when you get back. So get the, also when you go, um, make sure you have comfortable shoes, maybe a pair, a couple 
pairs of socks mm-hmm. to change into when you're out there because really that's going to help you so many ways and right. to kind of uh, get your stamina up. If you have comfortable shoes with good arch support and et cetera, it really will help your day go that much better when right. you're out there. Um, obviously, you know me, hydrate, <laughs> hydrate when you're out there, especially during hot days, whether it's hot or not, you should be hydrating regularly because that will help your stamina right. as well and help your body recover. Um, if you hydrate consistently uh, throughout your trip, but especially on hot days, uh, you will definitely want to do that. And there's water available for you everywhere at the parks. Just go up to anywhere that has a uh, fountain drinks that they give out. Just ask for free water. It's fine. But you can also fill in your own water bottles and bring them in, uh, whatever. Um, But just make sure you have water for everybody in your party as often as possible. Um, We talk about this all the time. It's one of Michelle's favorite tips as far as going out there to these parks during these times of year where it can be wearing you down because Mm -hmm. of the heat and everything else. Even though the times of year when it's not so hot, it just... You can fatigue you out there. So right. feel free to take a break somewhere in the middle of the day. You know, right. go very early. Get out there. You go early. You can hit a lot of attractions mm-hmm. early or whatever. Get that done. And as the day starts getting warmer, maybe right after lunch or whatever, go back to your resort. Take a little break. Mm-hmm. You know, get a shower in, change clothes hop in the pool, whatever you want to do, get a little nap in. And then as it starts to gradually cool down again in the evening, as much as Florida ever cools down, (laughs) but it will get a little bit cooler in the evenings, go back and enjoy the second part of the day, whether you're park hopping to a different park or whether you're staying in that same park and enjoy that time. Believe me, rather than trying to go from opening to close and then you're spending those last four or five hours at the parks just dying right because it's been so hot and you're so exhausted and you're just fried at the end of the day just take that moment to recharge your batteries will help you so much get through the day now those are all good points you know and like you're saying with the last one is you know even though you think oh i can do more i can do duplications of some things that I really love. After a while, if you're worn out, you're really not enjoy the level of enjoyment is not as keen as when you, you know, feeling f- refreshed and ready to go. Plus, if you're just, if you're doing this on the first few days of your vacation, if you're there for five days, seven days, whatever, and you're burning the candle at both ends for the first few days, it's going to gradually catch right. up to you much later on in the trip. And then those days are going to suffer. Whereas if you take it a little more, uh, you know, at a gradual pace throughout each day, it, it, it'll, it'll extend itself out right. more through the whole vacation. And even if you want to just take a day in the middle, I mean, I know you can't really resort hop the way you used to right now. But even just a day to go sit by the pool or relax, go to Disney Springs and grab a meal, you know, take it easy one day in the middle of your trip to just kind of recharge the batteries a little bit. That can help as well. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can do some other activities like the uh, miniature golf or, Mm -hmm. you know, other outdoor type things as well. Exactly. So that's just a quick tip as we get more towards the summer months, it's going to start getting more busy um, just to be, help you get through these days uh, moving forward and have the best trip possible. Yeah. Great tips. Much more beneficial and useful than... No, that Snapchat <laughs> thing is cool. I like it. I like that a lot. So uh, that's it for this week. Next week, we've already talked about it quite a bit, but it's going to be a very special week for us. As we already mentioned, we will be attending the opening day of Avengers Campus at Disney California Adventure Park on Friday. And of course, we'll share all those right. super experiences with you out there. We'll be doing it um, on social media all day on Friday and then coming back at some point the weekend and telling you all about it, what we Mm -hmm. experienced, what we liked, what we thought they could do better, whatever. Uh, We'll talk about that whole thing. Now, that week also happens to be our third anniversary (laughs) as a podcast. This is kind of similar to our first anniversary as a podcast where we went to uh, Star Wars Galaxy's right. Edge for opening weekend and then had uh, our anniversary, right. our first anniversary as well there. That we tried to jam into all one episode. It was a long, maybe a little bit too much to jam into one episode. We may split this up. I'm not sure yet. We may split this up yeah. into two episodes. I'm thinking maybe it's Saturday, the day after we go to Avengers Campus, we drop something you know, as kind of talking about mm-hmm. Avengers Campus. And then the next day we do on Sunday, we do our anniversary celebration, but we'll see how that goes. So anyway, uh, we'll let you know what we're planning on doing, but we want you to be a part of it, whether it's just listening, whether you send us something to, you know, put on the show, we want you to 
be included within our very, very special episodes. <laughs> yes. Well said, honey. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate that you joined us today. In the future, you can find us most everywhere you get podcasts. However, the very best place to find us is on our own website, HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. And while you're there... Please do sign up for our newsletter. Sign up for our newsletter. It's just another way to be involved in the Hyperion Adventures Podcast world. Uh, you can also do that by following us on social media. Believe me, you're going to want to check out all the stuff we see out there at Avengers Campus on mm-hmm. Friday. And you can do that by following us on Twitter, at Hyperion Podcast, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest, at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. We do have a YouTube channel. We may do something similar to what we did when Disneyland reopened, where we have a slideshow video of our trip back Mm -hmm. to Avengers Campus, and we will release that on YouTube along with these episodes. If you want to find us there, just do a search for Hyperion Adventures Podcast, hit subscribe, and you'll know whenever we have a new video for you. And if you ever want to contact us for any reason, please hit us up at our Gmail account, Hyperion Adventures Podcast at gmail.com. Yes, we'd love to hear from you with any of your comments. And speaking of comments, uh, we also really appreciate any reviews. Yes, thanks to everybody who's already given us a review. And if you want to do that in the future, of course, we will read that on an upcoming show. By the way, we have some big announcements for our anniversary episode Mm. that we'll be mentioning as well. We're excited to tell you a few things we have coming up. So you'll want to tune in for that, that episode for that as well. So that's it for this show. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Hyperion Adventures podcast. We look forward to sharing some time with you again next week, maybe a couple times. (laughs) Until those times, I'm Tom. I'm Michelle. And we hope that you have a magical week. Bye.